Hey there, it's day 7 of 18 in 2018. Let's talk about putting some release parameters into queues and then look at the release mode on a queue. You already know that turning off a sequence is the same as releasing it. Today we'll get into releasing individual parameters within a queue, which is super handy in simultaneous multi-queue playback. If you were with me yesterday, just back up your show and rename it for day 7. Today's going to build off the bump we worked with yesterday, so I'd encourage you to watch the video for day 6 if you haven't already. If you need the show file, download one that includes our updates from yesterday from the link in the YouTube description or at my website, consultrainer.com. Remember this bump on 1.115 that we were playing over top of Q3 in our simple sequence? We had made it a temp, and you could see the position's delayed timing on the transition into the queue. Today I want to continue on that delayed timing motif and make a second queue that lets our lights return to their original position with a similar delayed timing instead of all moving back together. To start with, I want to change our temp button to a go button. Now I can tap it and the queue plays and does not release when I let go. I want to write a second queue that tells these quantums to release the color and position information. When they're told to release, they'll restore back to the look they had in my simple sequence. To do this, grab the quantums and change to your program review. On the position encoders, if I tap on pan and tilt, the calculator will appear. Right here is the option for release. Do the same thing for tilt. Click the encoder and pick release. We need to do the same thing with color and we need to do it on the mix color attributes. Oh hey, here's something I don't love right now. This new user we copied defaulted to RGB instead of CMY. If you want to leave this alone, you absolutely can, but if you'd prefer to see CMY on your wheels, let's do this. Hit the setup key and go to defaults. In here, go to settings, and then click on the default mix color readout to change it to CMY. Cool. Anyways, we were about to also put release values on our mix color attributes, and we have to do all three of them, just like we did for pan and tilt. If you notice the R in parentheses on your encoders and in your programmer, that always means release. Before we store this queue, we want to remember to put the delayed timing on the position information. I like to keep an eye on the programmer when I'm doing this, just to ensure that I'm putting the timing in the right location. I'll click on delay so that I can do just that. Before we key this in, switch to the position encoder so that we don't accidentally put the delay timing on color. Press the time key until you see the word delay on the command line. Now you can type in any delay time you want. I want to spread out the delay, so I'm typing 0.5 through 0 through 0.5. That means my outside fixtures will wait a half second before releasing while my center units will release right away. All others in between will be equally spread out over time. If this is new to you, it'll make more sense when we see it in playback. I'll also put a link in this blog post that will give you more information about delay timing. It looks like I also had some delay time on color in the first queue, so let's move back to color and do the same thing. After that, store it as Q2 of the floor bump sequence and clear your programmer. We should still be looking at Q1, so click the Go button on our floor bump to see what Q2 looks like. You can definitely see the fanned out delay time on position, and I think I want to add a little fade time to that Q. Let's make it a one count. Well, we're mostly there. See how our quantums released the color and released back to the base position, but didn't restore their effect? That's because I need to put a release on the stomp value as well. One more time, select the quantums and click here where it says effect layer. On my pan encoder, I can see the stomp value. Let's change that to a release and update Q2. Now my effect from the simple sequence is back. It looks like I've turned off the bump, but if you look closely, you can see that Q2 is still active. I want this bump sequence to turn off automatically after Q2 completes, so what I'm going to do is write a follow queue to do just that. 
This key will be a blank queue, so make sure there's nothing in your programmer, and then store this nothingness as Q3 in your bump sequence. I'm going to rename it release, but we'll need to do a couple more steps. Remember when we changed the mode of one of our queues to break a couple of videos ago? Well, find that same mode cell for Q3, right click on it, and this time pick release. That means when this queue is played, the whole sequence will be released. Like I said before, I want this to be a follow, so under trigger on Q3, select follow. Press go and you'll see the sequence release. Now play through the whole thing again. Press go once and we've got our bump look up. Now you need only press go one more time to see the look release and then Q3 will automatically play and automatically release the sequence. This isn't the same as a flash button, but for the sake of our muscle memory, it now works more like a toggle. Press once for on, press a second time for off. It'll just be a fancier off than what you would get with a toggle. 